Today on Sugar Spun Run, we'll be making fried donut holes, no yeast required. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, it's Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. This one is super simple, and it has been on the blog for many, many years. One of my first recipes, super popular. If you haven't tried it before, I think you are going to absolutely love it. So for today's recipe, we are going to be frying these donut holes, and we don't wanna heat up the oil too quickly. So since it can take a while, the first thing I like to do is get my oil heating up. I'm going to be making these in a medium-sized, heavy-bottomed saucepan, and I'm going to fit the pot with a candy thermometer. That way I know what temperature the oil is. This is very important. You do wanna make sure that the tip of the thermometer is not touching the bottom of the pan or you won't get an accurate reading. Now I'm going to add enough vegetable oil to fill the pot about three inches deep with oil. All right, now we'll turn the stovetop heat to just a notch below medium and let that start heating up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. In the meantime, we'll prepare the dough for the donut holes, which comes together very quickly. In a mixing bowl, we are going to combine two cups of all-purpose flour, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt, and we'll stir these together so they're nicely combined. Now the next thing you're going to need for today's recipe is five tablespoons of very cold unsalted butter. I like to pop my butter in the freezer for about 10 minutes before I begin preparing this recipe. Now, if you have a pastry cutter, you could cut the butter into your dry ingredients. However, one thing that I've learned that makes this process a lot easier is to use a box grater instead. Now you can see here, I have a whole stick of butter even though we're using five tablespoons. What I'm going to do is I'll just peel back that wrapper and I'm going to use these last three tablespoons to hold onto while I grate off five tablespoons spoons worth of butter. Now I did this on a piece of wax paper just because it makes it easier to transfer the butter and I'll drop this right in my mixing bowl. I'm just going to use my spoon to work that butter into the flour until it's nicely incorporated. The next thing you're going to need is 3 fourths cup of whole milk and I'm going to add this. I like to add it in like two parts. We'll stir the milk in until it's completely combined. Now you don't want to overwork this batter but you do want to make sure it's cohesive and clinging together and nicely combined. Another thing that I want to note is that you don't want the dough to be too sticky. This is looking pretty good, but if I feel like the dough, the dough is too sticky to break a piece off of, or if it's really, really clinging to my fingers, a little bit is fine, but if it's clinging really badly, I will take a little bit of flour and I'll dust my hands with it. I'll sprinkle a little bit on top and I'll just work it into the dough that way. If it's a really hot day out or my butter is not quite cold enough, sometimes I have to add maybe a tablespoon or so of flour. The important thing is that the dough is clinging together and that you're able to break off pieces and it's just not so sticky that it's just sticking to your hands in a complete mess. All right, so our dough is looking pretty good here. So now we're going to form our donut holes. I like these to be about one and a half tablespoons in size. So I just use my one and a half tablespoon cookie dough scoop. Just get a level spoonful and then I'll roll this into a nice tight ball. Again, if the dough is too sticky, you can dust it with a little bit of flour and then just roll it into a ball and work that flour in that way. And if you don't have a cookie scoop, you can just break off pieces of dough, that's fine. Now I'll place this on a wax paper lined plate. All right, we have our donut holes formed, so let's head back over to the oil. So at this point, it's just about at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is great. So I like to set up a little frying station before we get started. I am just taking a cookie sheet and lining it with a couple pieces of paper towels. I like to have a nice layer about four or five towels deep. This will help catch any oil, make clean up a little bit easier, just make the whole process less messy. Sometimes I like to use a cooling rack too, that also helps. Now I'm going to be rolling these donut holes in a mixture of cinnamon and sugar. You could just roll them in granulated sugar or powdered sugar if you prefer. We'll be mixing together one third cup of granulated sugar with one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon and we'll just whisk those together and we'll keep them nearby because we'll need them pretty soon. Now when I'm frying donut holes, I like to use one of these. This is called a spider. Um, it's just great for lowering things into the oil without splashing yourself and removing them. I'll make sure to link to this in the equipment section in case you're interested because I use these all the time. Now I'm going to take one of the donut holes and I'll just place it in the spider and I'm going to carefully lower it into the oil and it should float right off of the spider. I'll do that with another one and if it sticks, 
then we're just going to gently loosen that with a spoon so it can float off of the spider and I can remove the spider. If you notice that the dough is too sticky, you can re-roll it between your hands. You can even lightly dust your hands with a little bit of flour and re-roll it. You don't want the dough to be so sticky. It's not mad manageable. So once you've added your donut holes, I usually only do two or three max at a time. I don't want the oil temperature to drop too quickly. We're going to cook these until they're a nice golden brown color. For me, this typically takes about one minute and 15 seconds to 90 seconds or a minute and a half. However, the exact amount of time that yours take may vary. All right, so it's been about a minute and a half. These are a nice golden color. So I'm going to use my spider to carefully remove them from the oil and place them on my little fry station. These are going to need to cool for a minute before I can touch them. So I'll go ahead and start frying the next two donut holes, but only do this if your oil is still at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine is still staying pretty steady at 350 degrees. Yours may have dropped, so just keep an eye on that. 350 degrees Fahrenheit is key. All right, so these should be cooled enough that I can touch them, so I'm just gonna pick them up and I'll roll them in the cinnamon sugar till they're nicely coated with it. Now, one thing I wanna mention that I haven't yet is you really wanna make sure that you're frying your donut holes all the way through. If your donut holes are the right size and your oil temperature is accurate, then you should be pretty much golden at this point if they're looking, if yours are looking like mine. However, we should take a knife and cut into one that's had about a minute to cool. And you just wanna make sure the center doesn't look gooey. Now this looks absolutely perfect. So I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with this. Now, if your donut hole is super dry and tough, it may need a little bit less time in the oil. If yours is gooey on the inside, then you may need, well, you definitely need a little bit more time. I'll include a troubleshooting section in the post for common issues that people run into when deep frying. All right, once you've fried all of your donut holes, and this is not all of them, you should get about 18. I've just fried a couple for you. You don't wanna watch me fry 18. They are ready to enjoy, and these are best enjoyed nice and warm. I hope you guys enjoy today's recipe, and if you try this one out, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think, because I always love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. These are amazing.